big gap in the middle. Hmm. That's better. Nice steady string of seed along the bottom. Anyway guys, g'day and welcome back to the channel. Yep, today's the day. It's actually the same day as the beginning of the last video, but uh, that's alright. Weather has improved, got a bit of mowing done, we'll get to that later. But for now, we're going to re-sow this paddock. Um, been a few more days since it was sprayed, so we'll have a look at that. So, food for thought, this roller does give very narrow rows, so the rows are quite thin. The, the, the grass plants aren't that good in them, but in all fairness, I don't know. Ah, it's a lighter sowing right here, so no, it probably is about right. But is there, is there a big gap right there, the whole way across. Now, the green plants are grass and... Uh, where is one? Probably there, clover. The odd bit of clover starting to show through there and there. But all these ones that are dying, which is a very clever spray, that spray, are weeds. That's yar. Oh, I couldn't even tell you what the other ones are. I know what they are. They're fat hen, the shepherd's purse. There's that sort of crap there. It's not really dying, but it's not really a big problem. Um, yeah, but they, I don't know which ones are which, is the argument. See, there's one there. That, I think that's Shepherd's Purse. I'm not sure. I don't know. There's another one there. They're dying anyway. So it's been, oh crikey, six or seven days now since it was sprayed. There's a three day withholding for reseeding after the spray. There's a 14 day withholding for grazing. So just in case you're ever wondering about that, uh, two totally different things. So we've got to record both of those, but we're well and truly past the reseeding date now. Um, so it's safe. Now, Got a whole lot of grass in here. That's a headland, so that sort of shows you what it looks like when it's really good. Yeah, there's a whole lot of grass plants in here. Now, we don't necessarily want to kill all of them, but we don't want to overcrowd with what we're doing with the drill. Now, I've got to sow at the full rate because of these strips. Um, yeah, so I thought what we're going to do is use these big buggers for covering harrows. Now, that's a bit of a bad one too, because you can see here I've disturbed the soil. Not much, just a little bit. That will probably mean some more weeds will come through. It's going to pull some of the grass plants out. It's going to pull a lot of the weeds out. There, you know, he's barely hanging on there and he's dying anyway because he's been sprayed. But some of these grass plants won't recover from that. But that's okay because we're putting new ones in. And this is the first time in 13 years of sowing grass in September and early October that I've had a failure and it's on three hectares and by now we've done well, 13 years and 20 hectares a year. First two, three years weren't quite 20 hectares, but you said 19, call, just call it 20, near enough. 260 hectares, and I've got a three hectare failure, and it's a failure because of a mechanical issue. So we can live with that. Um, so we don't want to disturb the soil because we're going to stir up more weeds. We do want to disturb the soil because we need to get seed to soil contact, and this is a broadcast seeder, so it drops the seed on top of the ground and the covering harrows are meant to mix it in with the soil. So a happy medium, I reckon, is that. Sorry, we run out of room in the gallery. Um, where was I? Yeah, the weeds are only really in this strip along here. Excuse that bale wrap, it's on the cards. There's a whole lot of other stuff rolled up to take to town one day. Um, the rest of the paddock isn't too bad, but there is a light scattering there. Because we had to spray this, spray that, that's less weeds going to seed, which means next time around should be less weeds in theory. Yeah, can't remember where I was going with that. Got distracted. Anyway, we'll go get into it. Right, let's have a look. Every unit is seeding, it is good. Every unit has seed hitting the ground, which is good. I'm getting bloody paranoid about this now. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Right, so. We're about, I don't know, two thirds, three quarters of the way through the first lot. First side, the bigger side, and we don't have a whole lot of seed left. Got one bag left over there. But just remember, 
a fair few of these seedlings are going to survive, so I'll button the rate back off by 20%. Fingers crossed that's enough to uh, make sure we get to the end, but the last thing I want to do right now on a replant is run out of seed. Yeah. So anyway, let's keep going. side is finished let's see how we got on here guys oh not much now well, said a bit of honesty i didn't know how much was in there for sure but the last three wee circles inside i had checked it every three rounds for quite a while to make sure we didn't run out and the reason for that is because i know that that bag there is more than enough to do that other side so if we had that bag there left over when we finish this side, I know we're safe. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can I do it one-handed? Can I? Can I? I think I can. How good. Oh, how good. How satisfying, eh? Beautiful. Bag is open. Well, here we go, guys. For the second time, finished. Hopefully the last time for a few years. Uh, not the best thing to have to do, but oh well, it happened. It's fixed. Didn't cost that much. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot pricier. It could have been a 10 or 15 hectare paddock somewhere that didn't happen. So. Yeah, although to be fair, a 10 or 15 head dead paddock, you probably wouldn't have that issue with finishing the Dutch harrowing and uh, covering the same area. Calves have had their first trap. Well, the first mob had. It's probably the best way to go. Works so a lot of time because otherwise it's to the sheep yard, then they jump out, to the cow yards where they. That's a hassle. We won't talk about that just yet. Anyway, your nut feeder the other day, other one there. And in all fairness, they're looking pretty good. So, a few of them probably getting close to do for a drench, but now nah, they're. They're looking good, and while they're on milk, yeah, they're happy as. Hello, talking about getting milk, this is their last feed. The younger ones further over, they're still going to get fed for a wee bit longer. How much longer, sir? A couple of weeks? End of the month, so yeah, it's like three weeks. Um, yeah, so tomorrow they might not be very happy with us, but they'll still get their, their calf nuts tomorrow. So. So yeah, Sarah doesn't want to tell us about it, but this, they probably should have been weaned a couple of weeks ago, but we did some calculations, well, I did some calculations and worked out we needed another 15 bags of milk powder, so we bought 15 bags of milk powder, and that's not cheap, and it turns out we probably didn't need 13 of them, but that's okay, because they will be better calves because of it. Slightly more expensive calves, but they'll be better, because we want to finish them at 18 months, as in a year and a bit from now, uh, yeah. 
it'll be good. Yeah. Still milking the feeder. Big hand for the nuts. Not even interested. They're just not even interested anymore. not going to the nuts quite as quick as he thought either but there won't be many left in about 15 minutes and hot. I always like to put new oil in at the start of the season as opposed to at the end and then they sit there all winter. It could be wrong in there because never any wind comes out of it so that would be the only thing. It could be dangerous. This is what it looks like as a finished product. That is a bucket, that white thing sitting there somewhere, which is because there's a trough over there. We were pumping a whole lot of water out yonks ago for, for the maze that was just over there. Yeah, so it looks a lot nicer now, doesn't it? No thistles everywhere. Well, they're still there, but you can see they're not very happy. So, anyway, we'll go get some more out of this. Um, yeah. 
Years just haven't got around to it, and uh, I'm gonna say there's some pretty clean gear on. So you always make sure when you're doing gearboxes that you can open the drain, the filler bung rather, before you open the drain because if you drain all the oil out, that's not gonna be tidy. That nah, drain all the oil out, and then realize you can't fill it back up. Feels original. Uh, oh, it is grass. One minute. Right, we've got a few tricks. First one is that. Way too big, looks that. Too small. talking here, just put a 9mm Allen key socket into an 8mm plug. That has been out four times in its life. Right, we got it. The uh, brass plugs here have maintenance on them. I'm just going to go get my oil container. Won't catch it all. Brass plugs because they've got a magnet in them to catch any filings. I like that idea, that is a good idea. I can support that. Get better quality brass. Make a better job of the threads. I don't know. Do better than this shit. Because this ain't good enough. Yeah. Awesome. Told you we wouldn't catch much of it. A wee bit of metal on the end of it there, but nothing too serious. That's done two years. So that should all come out. Even little things in this mower, like the other day, I did a panic because I've done a few other bits and pieces, a few thistles and stuff around the place. Um, I thought I'd do a round and I'll get out because I hadn't checked the wheel. We'll see if there's any heat in the gearboxes. Like the big tank, probably 10 minutes of running. The gearboxes weren't even warm. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on it. A lot. And this was one of the earlier mowers. They may well have refined things a lot since now. Since this mower, I hope they have. Um, but it just, look at that oil. It's a little bit discoloured in that one. The other one was pristine. But it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Oh well, guys, looks like my new GoPro has decided it's had enough for the day. It's got a flat battery, so we're back on phone screen. Yeah, handy wee pumps these. We're back on the GoPro. Now, two things here you won't believe. One, 15 millimeter. Who uses 15 millimeter? Two, to fill the bar with oil, that's got to come off. replaced these bolts a couple of times. 
See if I can see you, here we go, we're back on. So, you're supposed to have it on perfectly level ground, put an 85 millimeter block under that skid, fill it with the amount of oil you think it needs, put a dipstick in that hole, not one that they supply, like a piece of wire, and measure 17 mils of oil. Thankfully, the manufacturers tell us 3.2 litres of oil, 3.5 if it's been a bit so it's completely dry, 3.2 litres will be fine. So, I'm just going to do that. Anyway guys, that might do for this video I think. Got another job I'm about to start that is completely different and unrelated to that. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoy that and we'll catch you next time.